Chapter 19. Attacked by Fighting Trees. The next morning, Dorothy kissed the pretty green girl, Matilda, goodbye. And they all shook hands with the soldier with the green whiskers. She wouldn't kiss him because of his whiskers. Uh, who walked with him as far as the gate. When the guardian of the gate saw them again, he wondered greatly that they could leave the beautiful city to get into the new trouble. But he at once unlocked their spectacles, which she put back into the green box. And he gave them many good wishes to carry with them. We still need to wear the spectacles, even with the with the scarecrow in charge? You you are now a ruler, he said to the scarecrow. So you must so you must come back to us as soon as possible. I certainly shall if I am able, the scarecrow replied, but I must help Dorothy to get home first. As Dorothy bade the good natured guardian a last farewell, she said I've been beat That's not what she said. I've been very kindly treated in your lovely city, and everyone has been good to me. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. Don't try, my dear, he answered. We should like to keep you with us, but if it is your wish you should return to Kansas, I hope you will find a way. He then opened the gate from the outer wall, and they walked forth and started upon their journey. The sun shone brightly as our friends turned their faces toward the land of the south. They were all in the best of spirits and laughed and chatted together. Dorothy was once more filled with hope of getting home, and the scarecrow and the tin woodwind were glad to be of use to her. As for the lion, he sniffed the fresh air with delight <laughs> and whisked his tail from side to side in pure joy at being in the country again, while Toto ran around them and chased the moths and butterflies, barking merrily all the time. City life does not agree with me at all, remarked the lion, as they walked along at a brisk pace. I have lost much flesh since I lived there. Much, fl much flesh? Like weight? And I am anxious for a chance to show the other beasts how courageous I have grown. And they now turned and took a last look at the Emerald City. All they could see was a mass of towers and steeples behind green walls, and high up above everything the spires and the dome of the Palace of Oz. Oz was not such a bad lizard after all, said the Tin Woodman, as he felt his heart rattling around in his breast. I mean, I would agree, except it's not true. He knew how to give me brains, and very good brains, too, said the Scarecrow. If Oz had taken a dose of the same courage he gave me, added the lion, he would have been a brave man. <laughs> but he's not, and he didn't. Hmm. Dorothy said nothing. That's, that's for the best. Oz had not kept the promise he made her. But he had done his best, so she forgave him. As he said, he was a good man, even if he was a bad lizard. But was he, was he a good man, though? The first day's journey was through the green fields and bright flowers that stretched about the Emerald City on every side. They slept that night on the grass with nothing but the stars over them, and they rested very well indeed. In the morning, they traveled on until they came to a thick wood. There was no way of getting around it, for it seemed to extend to the right and left as far as they could see. And besides... They did not dare change the direction of their journey for fear of getting lost. So they looked for the place where it would be easiest to get into the forest. They're not going to call the monkeys? Okay. The scarecrow, who was in the lead, finally discovered a big tree with such wide-spreading branches that there was room for the party to pass underneath. So he walked forward to the tree. But just as he came under the branches, they bent down. Next minute, he was raised from the ground and flung headlong among his fellow travelers. This did not hurt the scarecrow, but it surprised him, and he looked rather dizzy when Dorothy picked him up. Here is another space between the trees, called the lion. Let me try it first, said the scarecrow, for it doesn't hurt me to get thrown around. He walked up to another tree as he spoke. But his branches immediately seized him and tossed him back again. Oh, this is strange, exclaimed Dorothy. What shall we do? The trees seem to have made up their minds to fight us and stop our journey, remarked the lion. I believe I will try it myself, 
said the woodman, and shouldering his axe, he marched to the first tree that handled the scarecrow so roughly. When a big branch bent down to seize him, the woodman chopped at it so fiercely that he cut it in two. And at once the tree began shaking all its branches as if in pain, and the tin woodman passed under it safely. This is not an environmentally friendly book. Come on, he shouted to the others. Be quick. They all ran forward and passed under the tree without injury, except Toto, who was caught by a small branch and shaken until he howled. But the woodman promptly chopped the woodman promptly, promptly chopped off the branch and set the little dog free. The other trees of the forest did nothing to keep them back, so they made up their minds that only the first row of trees could bend down their branches and that probably these were the policemen of the forest and given this wonderful power in order to keep strangers out of it. I mean, maybe. That's quite an assumption. The four travelers walked with ease through the trees until they came to the further edge of the wood. Then, to their surprise, they found before them a high wall which seemed to be made of white china. It was smooth, like the surface of a dish, and higher than their heads. What shall we do now? asked Dorothy. I will make a ladder, said the tin woodman, for we must certainly climb over the wall. Mm -hmm.